Imagine this. You're out on parole after serving time in prison. You stay on top of your parole, start working two jobs, go back to school, make the football team, and even get an internship. But then the pandemic hits and everything turns virtual, even check-ins with your parole officer. You keep calling and calling, but you never get through. Next thing you know, you're arrested for absconding. You've never even heard of that word before. They tell you absconding means that you're in violation of your parole for attempting to avoid supervision. You still don't understand. In the two years since you've been on parole, you followed every rule. You did everything you were supposed to. How could this happen? You're sent back to prison and everything you did to get back on your feet goes right down the tubes. While there, you find out that your PO retired and a new officer was assigned to your case, but no one ever notified you of the change. So you spent hours calling the wrong PO. And even though you followed all the rules, you still landed right back where you started, thanks to a technical violation that wasn't even your fault. As hard as it is to imagine, this is a real story, and it's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the unfairness of technical violations. On any given day in the US, roughly 75,000 people are incarcerated for technical violations. Other examples of technical violations include crossing state lines, missing curfew, being in the presence of alcohol, failing to pay court costs, and marrying someone with a felony conviction, none of which are actually a crime. Despite a complete lack of evidence that locking people up for technical violations makes the public safer, the US criminal justice system spends $2.8 billion each year doing just that. But there are alternative responses to people breaking the rules of their probation or parole that are being advocated for by organizations, but they need our support. To learn how you can help, visit impact.nowthisnews.com.